Can you hear me?
All right. And get all the little humans up front. And the medium sized humans. And then the giant humans can stay in the back. Harper, Harper. You want to tell everybody your stuff? You want to tell them about your tickets? No? What do you have tickets for, Harper? So later on, everybody needs to go talk to Harper and ask her what she has tickets for, okay? So. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Good. Nice, I love that energy. Great job. Anything exciting happen? Whoa. Um, we got to go to Bozeman for mom's birthday. Woo, how old's mom? Uh, Just kidding. Um, I, What'd you do in Bozeman? Um, we went, first we went to get lunch, and then we, um, in Bozeman, we went to lunch in Bozeman, and, um, then we went to the hotel and got everything in bed, and then we went swimming. And but Mom didn't swim in the whirlpool; she sw she swam in the hot tub. Oh. You had. I had a sleepover at my friends. A sleepover at your friends this week. Oh. On Thursday after school, we're leaving right away to go to Oklahoma, and we're staying at lots of hotels. Lots of hotels. I love staying at hotels. It's the best, isn't it? I get to do science. You get to do science this week? Nice. Tomorrow I have a pajama party. A pajama party? Is everybody invited? Oh, no. Where is it at? Fifth grade. Oh, it's in the fifth grade class? Very cool. Where? So, so when you wake up, you just get to go straight to school. Oh, that's so nice. Um, Haven letting me have a sleepover with her. Haven letting you have a sleepover? Nice. Um, I, uh, we get our hoverboard tomorrow. You get a hoverboard tomorrow? Like Back to the Future hoverboard? <laughs> no. What's a hoverboard? Uh, it has wheels and it's a board. <laughs> oh, it has wheels and it, okay. Tomorrow, I gotta have a pajama party. A pajama party for you, too? Man. Um, maybe during spring break, uh, Grandma gets to come over. Oh, that's a thought. What's exciting happening in your guys' life? Uh, you had your birthday. birthday party. You had your birthday party? Where did you have it at? Buzz, Buzz Balloon, and Trampoline. It was Buzz Bean, and it was at the Trampoline Park? Yeah. That is cool. Um, um, um. Uh, we'll come back to you. Trampoline. Trampoline. Cake. And cake. Oh, you got cake. Cake on birthday is always awesome. All right. What? I got to have horse riding lessons, but I, um, um, I hurt myself. Oh, you hurt yourself at horse riding lessons? We'll come back to you. All right. Would you guys like to sing a little? All right. Um, I will call upon the Lord and do is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from mine enemy. You know the Lord liveth and blessed be the rock and let God in my salvation be exalted. You know the Lord O oh Lord, and blessed be the rock, and let God and my salvation. Will Jesus Christ he die for me? And he took away my sin. 
so I will live with him for eternity. You know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let God in my salvation be so. You know the Lord, come on, and blessed be the rock, and let God in my salvation be exalted. You know the Lord, come on and blessed be the rock and let God and my salvation be exalted. The Lord, come on and blessed be the rock and let God and my salvation be exalted. Oh yes, now I will call upon the Lord. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember? Hallelujah, do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember? Hallelujah, do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Look away beyond the blue. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him to and look away beyond the blue. We're singing, do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do hallelujah, do Lord, oh do Lord, oh dear, hallelujah, do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me, look away beyond the blue. We got one more song that somebody wanted us um, to sing. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones with him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Very good. What's my question? How have you been the hands and feet of Jesus? Very good. How have you been the hands and feet of Jesus this week? Woo, look at them hands. I love it. I helped a friend that was alone. You helped a friend that was um, mom helped me, um, pick up my room. Mom helped you pick up your own room. No way mom helped you. Um, at school, I helped somebody, um, because they were lonely, and then I helped somebody at school because, um, um, uh, someone called him a, um, a brat. So I helped him, and then I helped someone today at school, uh, at recess with, uh, because someone was bullying him, and then I helped someone at the library. Nice. You got a, some mean kids. Thank you. I'm glad you were there to help comfort people. I have a cake, too. You had a cake, too? I uh, Did you cake. share that cake? Yeah. Way to be the I'm hands and feet. I have a cake, too. Did you both, did you both share? Yeah. That is pretty good. It'd be hard for me to share my cake. Just letting you know. How about you, buddy? Um, I eat some cake, too. And you were the recipient, huh? Very nice. Someone got locked out of their own room, and um, someone, someone couldn't open the door in their, um, in their classroom door, so I helped them get up. I helped, I opened the door for them, and also, um, someone was lost at school because it was their first day of school. And I knew their t where their teachers were, and she and um he told me so I so I brought him to that class. Very cool. You helped at a very scary moment for that kid. That's awesome, bud. We were doing math, and my friend she didn't know how to do it, and I explained it for her. Ooh, helping with math, you brainy. Very good. I have two things. I helped. You get one. Okay. Then um um. I clean. I helped mom clean the house 
um, before we leave, and I helped my teacher get a paper. I helped her get a paper pin, paper clip pin, and hand it to her since she was putting it in the box. Nice, helping the teacher and mom at home. Anything from the back row? No pressure. Ooh, we're letting elephants in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I help. I helped uh, someone that fell at school, and I helped uh, Skylo read. Nice, very good. Awesome examples of being hands and feet of Jesus this week. Does anybody have any prayer requests that they want to thank God for? Say thanks, God. That was awesome. Or God, help me with something. What you got? Hope Mom comes home sooner. Sooner than later. All right. Anybody else? You got something? What you got? Hope we have a safe trip to Oklahoma because it's going to be a really long way. It is, but you get to stay in all those hotels. Yes, sir. Four? Two there, two back. Three or four? That's more than I can get to this week. So nice job. So safe travels on your journey. You want to pray? Okay, come on up. We're going to have Mr. Axton come up and pray. He wanted to pray. Oh, you did you have something, a prayer request? I shall and Mikey this cake. Man, you shared Mikey's cake? You want to pray for your mom? Okay. Will do. All right, buddy. Let's pray, and then we'll give it over to Mr. Rod. Dear God, thank you for this day. I'm glad, that, I'm glad that we're all blessed by the Spirit of God, and I hope we all have a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. Love that prayer, bud. Youth that are going to POW, let me know tonight at the very latest tomorrow so I can get those numbers in. Okay, there'll be a bridal shower for, I guess I'll back up a little bit. Hi, right. good to see you all. <laughs> Only greeted some of you, not all of you. Welcome, welcome online too. Um, if you want to tell us you're visiting online, you can do that at billingschurch.org. There's a virtual visitor's card there. Um, okay, there'll be a, a bridal shower for Kendra Serrano next month. And if you would like to be a part of the group gift, be sure to connect with Renee Monday or Mona Krogstad. We will be happy to take your money. Um, then some prayer requests. Uh, Len Golding is at home, but will need further tests. He's, um, he's struggling to heal from his surgery from a few weeks back, and he's also having some other you know, blood pressure and breathing problems. So they want to do some more tests. So he's he's at home and doing okay, but we still need to do more tests and still trying to recover. Um, Terry Knapp is leaving Mayo Clinic or leaving that area tomorrow to come home, but he needs to return mid-March. He's going to have uh, microwave treatments. Um, and uh, that's, he says that's probably the best targeted procedure they, they can do for him to, to help him with that. Um, Brett Williamson will be having shoulder surgery March 11th. That's next Thursday. Um, asking for prayers for that. And Alan Loomis continues to need our prayer as they, you know, are doing tests and trying to find out what's going on. And then Scott Chisholm's mom is having surgery. She might still be in surgery oh they haven't started yet okay okay so she's scheduled for surgery this evening so uh i want to keep uh, her in prayer also uh any other announcements or prayer requests ivy is sick is that why mikey wanted to pray for her okay all right um anything else Okay, let's pray. Mighty God, um, 
we recognize that you are on your, on your throne. Even while we talk about some struggles, while we talk about medical needs and um, concerns and pressures, um, as we consider things that are unresolved for uh, lengthy periods, Lord, we realize that it's not because uh, uh, you've gone to sleep or left us alone or don't care anymore. You are still on your throne. And so with that in mind, we, we approach you again, uh, believing, having faith that uh, you are the best one to help us, really the only one to help us. And you work through various circumstances to do that. We, we thank you for the medical personnel who've been trained as they have and who've learned what they have and the procedures that are possible nowadays compared to years back. Thank you for what can be done. And so we pray, Lord, we, we ask you to heal um, and uh, give the results that we're looking for, for um, Scott's mom, for Alan, for Terry. Lord, help those who are looking for test results that they would get good information, Lord, and, and therefore be able to know how to deal with that. For instance, uh, Len and uh, uh, Brett, Lord, help them with their, um, what they require. And heal Ivy too, Lord. Um, we're grateful, Lord, for, for things we can celebrate, good events like um, a bridal shower that Kendra's looking forward to. Thank you for uh, weddings and uh, for birthdays uh, celebrated here, for, for parties to, to join, PJ parties and such like, for trips to go on, for families like Grandma coming to visit. Thank you, Lord, for these blessings and these wonderful times. Um, and thank you that we can call on you at all times for protection, like on trips, um, uh, when we're away from family. Lord, thank you that we can know that you are listening and that you are involved. And uh, again, we are grateful that we can serve others, that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus, that there's, that there's a way we can demonstrate the love of Jesus, that we can uh, remain humble by serving others, and that we can be a blessing in others' lives. Thank you, Lord. These are significant things. Help us to understand um, their significance when we uh, serve and help others. Lord, please teach us more tonight uh, in our various classes that we'd be able to learn and grow and um, be better equipped to honor and serve you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, teachers can go. Uh, no, go. Uh, Teachers must go. <laughs> and then kids can go. Go enjoy your class. Mm. He's excited, huh? Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, so the wilderness series is done, and we are doing another, I guess, a mini series uh, titled. It took me a long time to come up with this fancy title: Non-COVID Lessons Learned. I don't even know myself what that means. Uh, so, well, basically, the idea behind the series is to focus on things that maybe COVID highlighted or made clear to us or, or showed up for us, um, and that we might say should have been clear to us without the help of COVID, you know, that we maybe didn't need this season to, to remind us of, uh, and yet it's been useful. So I guess we could say that, that COVID is one of those things we can, we can consider all joy as we consider the trial of it, uh, like James says. So, so the idea then is that, you know, some things have come out of COVID. We've had the opportunity to look at certain things. Um, but the emphasis here is, is that, that maybe we, um, we should have known these things already, or we did, and it was a good reminder. So um, I want to look this evening at, at the first um, 
aspect of that, namely uh, trust. Uh, trusting God, it's, I guess, falls under the umbrella of the sovereignty of God, but the, the emphasis is trust. Uh, because he's sovereign, how do we respond? And so, you know, so this thing comes along called COVID and what's going on? What's God doing? Why would he allow it? You know, all the heartache and the difficulties, the struggles, the strife that came from it. So we, we want to trust God. Um, there's some very interesting scriptures on God's sovereignty, on his um, total control. We have, I know we've looked at some of those uh, in recent months. Um, and so we want to look at, depending on the time, three or four aspects tonight about um, these, his sovereignty and what, how that affects our trust in him and whether or not we can trust him and, and how that goes. Uh, before we carry on with that, are there any questions? Um, if, if you want to ask about a particular sports team that won or lost, I don't know. I couldn't answer that question. But um, in terms of the series that we're going to do, um, does that seem clear enough? Sweet. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Okay. So the first thing we want to look at here, the first example of God's total sovereignty <coughs> and how we fit in with that has to do with how long we live. So um, I bet we're familiar with Psalm 139. Uh, in the context there of the words about how we're shaped, how we're made, how God has formed us in our mother's wombs, what does it say about our days on earth also? So that's um, verses 13 to 16. And in particular, the things about our days or how long we live um, comes up in verse 16. But it's in the context of how God made us. So he's given us life. He has shaped and formed us. He is in control of all of that. And connected to that, then, he, he says some stuff about how long we'll live. Does anybody want to read just verse 16 if you have a, a text there with you? Okay, that's an amazing thing. I'll read it for our online audience, the part uh, that pertains to us here. In your book, they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. So, so when did God write down all our days we would live and what would happen? When did he do that for each of us? Right, before we were born, <laughs> he's determined how long we would live. Okay, that seems like a, a mind-blowing concept there. Um, uh, Psalm 31, and then we'll, we'll also jump to Proverbs 14. Uh, Psalm 31, 14 and 15. If you get there fast, go ahead and read it. Psalm 31, 14 and 15. And notice what concepts are connected in these verses. Psalm 31, 14, 15. Okay. So right now we're not really looking tonight at <coughs> delivery from enemies. We'll sort of touch on it a little bit later, maybe, uh, about injustice. It's maybe connected. But... What does he flow from, uh, verses 14 to 15? He's looking, he says, I trust you, right? You are my God, and he connects that immediately to my times are in your hand. So again, not my control, but God's control. And then um, I will read uh, Job 14, <coughs> 1 to 6 here. Man who is born of woman is short-lived and full of turmoil. Oh, that's good news. Remember, this is Job, right? 
Like a flower, he comes forth and withers. He also flees like a shadow and does not remain. It's actually good news that we're here for a short time, in my opinion. You know, that we don't live the hundreds of years that they used to live on earth. Um, the, oh, I'll have to change the thousands and dusts. Uh, you also open your eyes on him and bring him into judgment with yourself. Who can make the clean out of the unclean? No one. Here we get to it now. Since his days are determined, the number of his months is with, with you, and his limits you have set so that he cannot pass. I'll stop there. So, what does verse 5 imply in terms of how long we live? If we have a great will to live to 100 years, and God determined 80, how many will we live? 80, right. Yeah, so it says the number of the, his months is with you, his days are determined, and his limits you have set so that he cannot pass them. So how long we live is in God's hands, very clearly. Um, what are some implications? What do we get to think? If God is sovereignly in control of how long we live, what are some implications? Okay, we are not in control by default there. Yeah, if God is, we are not. Okay. Yeah, so there are still um, responsibilities we have because we don't know the end. So we have to live faithful lives every day until our end comes. We, you know, the, the, the notion, for instance, of, you know, I'll, 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 I don't know, live a fun-filled life or whatever label we want to put on it and I'll, I'll get saved later in life is fallacy, right? It's foolishness. I don't know when the end will come, so I've got to make good decisions. I've got to take responsibility for stuff and, and do what needs to be done as soon as I'm aware of it. Because I don't know when the end comes. It might be, I might have fewer days than I expect. Any other implications? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> some some deep stuff there. Yes, indeed. Now, Jeff's talking about, you know, if we, uh, I guess for us, an obvious thing is if we jump off a cliff, especially a nice high one, you know, there's, we know what the outcome will be. So so God's foreknowledge um, is what um, Jeff was talking about, is, is, is factored into this it's for the, I guess, the online community. So there, there are these, the, these different aspects, it's, you know, it, it, can, it can uh weary the brain to think about these things but yes definitely foreknowledge is a part of that and so i guess one way i like to s i want to find a snappier way to say it <laughs> and it might take me a while but basically um god's will gets executed one way or the other he works with our obedience and he works with our disobedience or our good decisions and our foolish decisions our free will are fully a part of god's overall will 
and that gets incorporated. And so these things are too complicated for us to understand all of the ins and outs and on what basis he does make all of his decisions. But w we would say we would that, for instance, somebody who's going to jump off a cliff, God factored that into the decision of how long things would live. But I mean, there's so much speculation there. If we, when we get to the point that we actually do it, we know what the outcome will be. But you know what? What? I mean, we, we might want to go, but never, but not get there to the edge because of whatever other factors that God chooses to put in there. But when that event occurs, that might be what God uses as his reason to say that's the end for you. That's so these are these are some aspects uh, to consider. Um, I'm, I'm one of the things I was wondering about is is I'm concerned. I mean, surprised sometimes at the frailty of life. And uh, sometimes uh, at the at the robust will to live. Or, or just the, the ability to survive. Some people die surprisingly to us when they're fully healthy. You know, people say, I, we have no idea what happened. The person was fully healthy, heart rate was good, blood pressure was good, fill in the blank, all was good. We don't know what happened. Or, or conversely, somebody gets pulled out of a, what used to be a car and is now a little can, which was crushed, and it has to be cut out of there. You don't know how they survive, but they do. They Survive that, it, you know. So, so sp we don't have answers to all these. But these are some of the the the, the implications here. Is that that you know we can we can see that God is at work doing things when that when He calls time, that's time. And if if it's not time yet, then it's not time yet. And then so God's in control of that. So how does that connect to to COVID? You know, just generally speaking, there is of course a. A bigger discussion out there about uh, personal and community responsibility, about reckless and irresponsible behavior, um, you know, something you were uh, referring to, the, uh, Jeff. Uh, but generally speaking, does the existence of COVID do anything to upset the truth that God is in control of how long we live? No. And so we would say, you know, with all the decisions we want to make as we you know, decide what it is we, we, how we live and, and what we expose ourselves to and all, th that's all factored in. We do not need to fear. And that's easily said, right? Because while we know we don't need to fear, while we know we don't need to be anxious, that just comes with the territory, the human territory. And therefore God says, in your anxiety, please just call on me List the things you're thankful for. You'll remember the stuff I've done. You'll see my power again. You'll remember my power. You'll see what I've done. And I will give you peace. You guys can't explain the peace, but I'll give you the peace. And it'll help you. Um, you know, it'll protect your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So that's a process connected to when we have anxieties and when we have fear. So, so th the point is not to say that because of the possibility to die, uh, because of the disease or any other disease, if we have anxieties or fears that we're now second-class citizens, that's not the point. We, we, we can respond well to these things. We can choose to trust in God and to lay our anxiety before Him. But we want to remember this perspective that our days are in His hands and He knows what He's doing and He gives us the allotment based on whatever the factors are. We just try our best to live faithfully. Jeff. Indeed, indeed. So for the online audience, I'll try to summarize that. Jeff saying this, this 
oops, um, what's it called? Virus. Was not a surprise to God. You know, he saw it coming. So, you know, in terms of trusting him, we, he knew it was coming and uh, he's made the way for us. And one of those ways is uh, the, the rapid response we have nowadays with the medical advances we've made to be able to deal with something that similarly 100 years ago caused a lot more damage. Yeah, so we're grateful to God and we see his sovereignty in there. And we, we just keep looking to him and we, we trust him no matter what. Um, okay. So, um, any other questions on that? Otherwise, we're going to flip to the next one about justice. God's sovereignty and justice. All right. Um, Proverbs 23, 10 to 11. And there, there are multiple scriptures on these things, by the way. This is just a sample. So Genesis 23, 10 to 11. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I say? Okay. Proverbs. Let's stick with Proverbs 23, 10 to 11. Thank you. Yep, again, you guys passed the test of attention. Um, do not, no, yeah. Do not move the ancient boundary or go into the fields of the fatherless. For their redeemer is strong. He will plead their case against you. So the fatherless, um, widows, orphans, the little ones, Jesus calls them, you know, those who are, who can be victimized, God protects them. Um, we read in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament about aliens, you know, foreigners are often exploited. You know, the different classes of people, groups of people, and God wants to protect them. And so he's saying here, he will, he will take care of that. That's the Lord will plead their case against you. And of course, when we're going against the Lord, we will lose. Um, and, and yet we see people do get defrauded out of things, don't we? It's, I guess it seems like a, a contradiction, doesn't it? So, so is it true? Is God in control of justice? Uh, people are scammed all the time. Where is the sovereign God to sort these things out? Um, do you guys remember Luke 18, one and following? The uh, parable of the unjust judge. There's some interesting stuff in that uh, parable for us also. Luke 18, um, uh, 1 to 8. I guess for our online audience, because there's so many verses, I'll just read that. Um, I'll pick it up in verse 2. Uh, there's a reason for that. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. And there was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. And for a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God, nor respect man, yet because, of this, because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection, lest by continually coming she wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now shall not God bring about justice for his elect, who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them speedily. When the Son of Man comes, however, will he find faith in the earth? So, God will not delay, it says. God promises to sort it out. And that's, again, part of the key here. God's timing is perfect. When God does things on his schedule and not mine, it doesn't mean he's delaying. That's one of the difficult things for us to try to grab hold of and to trust him on. When, when my struggles continue long or longer than I want them to, is God still faithful? Can God still be trusted? Is he messing with me? Is he playing games? Am I, as somebody said, part of an ant farm and God's just using his magnifying glass to burn the ants 
as he feels like he wants to do. So it says very clearly that God is in, he sees these things. He will bring about justice. We saw that in Proverbs. We see that here in, in, in Luke 18. But now let's also go to, it connects us to the third aspect that we want to look at in terms of God's sovereignty, and that's God's timing. Um, what to us might seem like a, a delay um, really is not. Has anybody here, I have to read this because it's so complicated. Has anybody here ever experienced wanting something to happen by a certain time, not having it happen, and then saw it was better that it didn't happen, that had it happened, it would have been worse? <laughs> yes? Sweet. Do you have an example? So you understood, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You did, along the way, were you were you wishing you had got married earlier? Yeah. Okay. They would. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. So the delay in in getting married and having children, at times, seemed hard, but certainly it worked out well. Yes, indeed. Anybody else? Supposed to. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Stephen was sharing about uh, being delayed going on a trip and how it worked out. That's a summary. So it was frustration with the delay, but it worked out well for safety, probably. Um, you know, maybe you got frustrated thinking of, you know, needing something. I, I have a, an example here. I'm not sure. I found it, it it's supposed to be true from the uh, Sunday School Times about Dr. James M. Gray. So. Even if it's not true, it illustrates the point, but I, I'm going to, in good faith, say it's true. Um, Mr. Uh, Dr. James M. Gray says, once when convalescing from a long illness, it was suggested that for the benefit of the change, I visit the British provinces. The arrangements were all made when unexpectedly another malady threw me on my bed again. How disappointing. For what was I waiting longer in the sick room? Soon I received a satisfactory answer. Picking up a newspaper, I read that the steamer on which I should have sailed struck a reef on entering St. John Harbor and almost in instantly sank. So it won't always be as dramatic for us, but it illustrates the point. With God in control, it's good for us to trust that when he delays something, when his timing is not ours, that there's a good reason. And even if it's the evil one who's causing trouble, God has allowed that. Remember, we read that in Scripture. The evil one and his minions need to ask permission from God to mess with us. And God will allow it because he is trustworthy. So his timing might not be ours, and it might be frustrating. It might be a struggle. But if we can learn to trust him. So... Um, there are things that people wanted to do, yeah.
for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. If we were to, uh, Jeff saying anybody who might have died in that steamer sinking, you know, could well have been spared trouble later. And for a Christian sinking there, you know, salvation was ensured. And and from what we read in Scripture, departing from this earthly tent and being in our et eternal dwelling is better by far. There's no comparison. I try to come up with comparisons sometimes on Earth, but we're limited. <laughs> I can, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, um, you know, some of the places we've been in, in, in the informal settlements, the sort of smells that are there and, and the leaking homes and the external, yeah, the, 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 the porta potties we have here are first class quality compared to some of those, those places. Um, and, and, you know, the folks who need to walk long distances just to get water in a bucket and there's, there's no electricity, the dangers that exist there, you know, those kinds of things. And, and you know, some of these, these kids in third world countries l live on trash heaps and, and pull various types of trash out of there to try to sell, to recycle in some way for, for income, or they, or they eat some of the garbage. Um, so. If I consider those and compare them to, I don't know, I've never been to one of these places, but I've seen pictures and movies, I don't know, the, the idyllic island paradise, you know, five-star service, you know, clean water, you know, just being served and, and just much better smells. I don't know, that comparison or that distinction is doesn't even come close to the difference between earth and heaven. You know, the stuff that we go through that's good or bad here is just nothing compared to what it is that awaits us. So, yeah, if we go down in a, in a steamship, well, not whatever ships are nowadays, don't have steamships anymore, whatever it is, it's a, it's, it's a blessing, right? And maybe, yes, people are spared things. Um, so God's timing with COVID, People had plans, right? People wanted to do stuff, weddings, trips. Man, put on hold, postponed. What a frustration. You know, what a serious wrinkle in our lives. That's what we're saying. So we want to trust God. We look for the silver lining. So is God trustworthy? Can he bring about a result that is better. And so we, we're trying to trust him on his timing. We're trying to trust God in his sovereignty. And again, these are things that maybe are brought out or highlighted or accentuated by COVID or these conditions. But these are things that we don't need COVID to teach us. <laughs> They're in here, right? So these are, are non-COVID lessons. <laughs> we don't need COVID to teach us, but it's good if we can be reminded. Um, uh, we think of, um, what are they called again? Abram and Sarah. And their decision not to wait for God's timing. You know, John Bevere in that series called that birthing an Ishmael. All right, and the struggle that came from that, apart from the historical impact of that, it caused great stress in their family. With Abram and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Hagar. I mean, that whole situation was a mess. Um, could have been prevented had they waited for God's timing. But this is one of the things that we do, right, is, is when it seems like it's taking too long, we're at risk of coming up with a solution ourselves. Yeah, I will sort it out. I know what to do. It just is better to wait for God's uh, guidance and timing. Um, One of the things that's important for us is in, in making decisions is, is getting God's guidance. And then, so timing is one of the issues, but there are other guidelines also, you know, on what basis we make, we make decisions. Um, in general, we're looking at trusting God and trusting God to do it his way. 
So do it in righteousness, do it in truth, do it according to sound principles. Um, so we would say any decision we make, we don't want to preempt God, we don't want to get ahead of God, but he doesn't always, and some of this discussion came out of the wilderness series, you know, some stuff you've mentioned, Jeff, and all. sometimes we don't have a direct, this is what God wants us to do, and we have to make decisions. And so as, as spiritual people, we want to make decisions. So what guidelines do we use? Um, we don't want to do anything that's dishonest or unbiblical, right? I guess. Um, but as I'm waiting for God to guide, as I'm looking for answers, I'm trying to make decisions and trying to be guided by what's right and wrong. I, you know, what, what do I use as part of that? What did, what did Rahab do to s rescue the spies? Okay. She, yeah, she disobeyed. The, she was, you know, foreigners were supposed to be turned in, I guess. So what did she say about the direction they went? Yeah, so what word do we use for what she did? She lied. <laughs> there it is. She lied. Um, but, but was that blessed? Yeah, now you see, now it gets complicated. Um, so, so on what basis was it blessed? On what basis was that, was that okay? It seems like there was, there was a greater good. Um, you know, I, I think a sound principle here is, is what Jesus calls the weightier matter. I think we've discussed that before, the weightier matter. So, so we would be tempted to conclude then that under certain con good conditions, it's okay to do something wrong, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> this is just so confusing, man. Um, so what do we want? Just give me a straight answer. Tell me what to do. Tell me what not to do. Yes, sir. Maybe, maybe. And, and, and yet I guess we'd, we'd say that because it's one of the commandments, but lying and false testimony and all, Rahab, I guess, went against God in that sense. But to preserve a life, and Jesus addresses that also, right? With animals that fall in ditches, you break covenant, I mean, you break the Sabbath, you know, to, to rescue a child or an animal that falls in there. So, so, so if we just have a list of what to do and what not to do, uh, then that's then that's cool. I think that's what God should do because it can get really complicated. But it seems like God intends for us to engage in an ongoing relationship with Him. I think if there's one thing we know about us as humans, it's this: the easier thing. Well, the multiple things we know about ourselves, but the easier things are for us, we would think the better that would be, right? So if God just gave us a list of things to do and a list of things not to do and was very clear on everything, uh, you know, what decisions we need to make concerning marriage or jobs or whatever, wouldn't that just be simpler? Um, except that I think what we would do if we had all of that is we would get on with that without a relationship with God. I think this is one of the key things we need to hold on to or see or understand in these struggles we have, be it COVID or anything else. Very likely, there might also be little relationship with other people because we would just do what we know we have to do and not do what we shouldn't do, assuming we'd be obedient. But it's not just all about these easy answers. By design, I think, by God's design, it involves wrestling with things, wrestling with God struggling with concepts and in that sense we pursue relationship with him and also with each other so notice what's that somebody goes and we grow yeah yeah without pain we can grow right so so this growing that occurs as we wrestle and, and, and learn things notice though interestingly here the reason that luke gave that Jesus tells the parable recorded in Luke 18. Do you remember? Do you know what verse 1 said? I, I skipped it on purpose. But what does verse 1 say? Jesus told them this parable, parable so that. Okay. Should always pray 
and not give up. It's an in this was spoken to illustrate a few things, one of which was stay engaged with God. Do not disengage. Wrestle with God. Put your hope in God. That's what he's calling us to. And I think in COVID, he's calling us to that. Again, we didn't need COVID to remind us of that. We shouldn't have needed it. So again, it's a non-COVID lesson. You know, we just stay engaged with God all the time. That's what he's calling us to. I think what, when, when, when God delays things, according to our estimation, he's not actually delaying things, but it is, what's going on is that he's expecting us to remain in and deepen even our relationship with him. It's very intentional, the things that God does. We can trust him. He is sovereignly in control of all of these things, and we can trust him. The fourth one I wanted to look at, and I guess we've only got one or two minutes, is, is about decisions we make in life. Of course, it's in some ways tied into what we've looked at before, but this is a doozy. You should see some of these. We might have a chance to just read one or two. Um, so Proverbs 16, for instance, 1 to 9. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Conversely, if you don't, they won't, right? Uh, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Good night. That, there's some troublesome stuff in there. <laughs> Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. By loving kindness and truth, iniquity is atoned for, and by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from the evil. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Who gives us peace? It's not within our hands to do that. We just try to make good decisions. Better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. And then verse 9, the mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Um... Proverbs 20, verse 24. Man's steps are by the Lord. How then can man understand his way? Psalm 37. Uh, I guess, yeah, we'll look at Psalm and then we'll get to James. Um, actually, we, I guess we won't look at James because I guess that's more familiar to us. Uh, uh, Psalm 37. 23, 24, the steps of a man, I don't think it gets much clearer than this, are established by the Lord and he delights in his way. When he falls, he shall not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. Uh, James 4, of course, talks about not saying we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do the next thing, but rather, if the Lord wills, we will do this or that. So again, there's planning there. We're not saying we have to sit around and just wait for God to speak to us very clearly. And if we don't hear something, we don't do anything. There's planning involved, but we understand that God is sovereignly in control. Whatever my plans are, if God doesn't want to establish them, he, they won't happen. If the Lord wills, we will do this and that and the next thing. And then it ends off talking about to him who knows what the right thing to do and doesn't do it to him, it's sin. So there's a connection there in terms of giving honor to God first and foremost. So, like I said, this is just a sample of, of multiple things. We're looking to trust God in his sovereignty. Whatever comes our way should not rattle our faith in God, nor our trust in God, that what he allows is okay and even good. It's intentional, and it's for our good. Thanks, folks. Yeah, God bless you guys. Have a good week. Walk with greater trust and faith in the Lord.